Coming up, we take a look at the last 12 months of updates for Office Mobile, including Sway, a digital canvas for sharing multimedia content, updates to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint Universal apps, as well as new Office experiences on the iPad Pro. I'm joined again by Ben Walters from the Office team. It's been about a year since we demonstrated Office Universal apps on Windows 10. What's new, Ben? Yeah, so we've been continuously adding capabilities to the Office apps and even some new applications to the product suite as well. So in August, we released the Sway app for Windows 10, a native app, and also made some updates to the iOS apps for iPad Pro in September. But why don't we start with Sway? Yeah, so Sway is a great digital storytelling application. And with the uh, web-based version we had originally, we've now released a Windows 10 app as well, which mm -hmm. is a new addition to the Office suite on Windows 10. And you can see here, it looks very similar to what we've seen in the browser today. So I have my uh, storyline, I can go through and add things in, and I have this great Sway here that we created earlier, showing the uh, financial report for Northwind and Contoso. Now as I scroll through my preview here, you'll notice we've got a couple of new content cards that have been added to my uh, to Sway. And so the first is this chart preview, where I can start to show data and represent that information via my Sway. And it's really easy for me to go and update that data by simply hitting the data tab, or even go and change the way that's represented. So if I want to update my chart from a uh, column graph to a bar chart, I can do that. Even take that out to a stack bar chart so I can get a great view of those percentages. And as I do that, the preview updates in real time, so everyone who's viewing that will see an updated view of that data coming through. Okay. Now as I scroll through, you'll also notice we have these great new ways to represent images. Sway's all about rich content and being able to work with that. Mm -hmm. And so you can see here I have this great transition effect on two images that I have. So I can show before and after effects or maybe where we're at with our products today and where we want our products to go tomorrow. Just with that simple slider transition, making it a great way to be really engaging with people on the site. Very nice. And then as we scroll down, I've got other ways to represent my images as well. So we used to have a stack of cards which you could show before where images would be stacked upon each other. But I can now represent those in a grid. And so you can see here I have this great view of you know, all of the products and, and kind of branding we have for our solar panels right there in this grid view. You'll also notice this image down in the bottom right corner seems to have someone cut out it there. It looks like his head's cut off a bit. Yeah, just a little bit. And, and while Sway is you know, great at being able to position my content for me, sometimes it misses what the important piece of the picture is. So if I come back to my storyline here, and scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see that that image has a, uh, has a picture of a guy in there, and I want to actually make sure that that face shows up as the standard focus point. And so what I can do is, going into that image, simply tell Sway what's important and what should be shown. So as it goes through and rescales, it'll make sure that that face is always shown, because that's the important focus of that image. And you'll notice again in the background that updates in real time, showing me that that's been updated and ready for people to view straight away. So Sway is really an excellent digital canvas for storytelling, but why don't we bring this back to Word and Excel and PowerPoint? Yeah, so the Office mobile apps for Windows 10 were RTM'd back in July, and later we extended the universal experiences for Windows 10 mobile as well. So let's start by having a look at Excel. Okay. So here we can see we've got Excel, and, and this is really still an application that was built from the ground up for mouse and keyboard, and we've continued to extend in and make it easy for you to work in a touch environment. So I'm going to go and add a new line item to my product list here, and I'm going to add a new solar panel. And you'll notice as I type is that Excel's going ahead and doing autocomplete for me. Now in this case on my category line it's pretty easy because I've only got one item to select from. But if I move over to my item code, I want to add a, a new AP100 uh, item code. And you'll notice as I go through that I actually get the list of all the item codes that are there. So if I decide I wanted to add another AP92, maybe I'm going to make this an AP923 rather than an AP100. I can go ahead and do that simply by selecting from my autocomplete drop down list. So okay. really quick and easy ways to do things just based on the touch environment. And that's going to save a lot of time, especially given that you are having to use a touch keyboard. Yeah, exactly. And there's also other areas as well that have made it much easier for touch. So things like search and replace. You'll notice here I have this new search icon in the top right of the uh, home tab. And if I click that, I actually get this new find dialog where I can go through and find the number of instances, in this case, of hardware, which I want to go and remove from my list. Mm -hmm. And as I type that in, on the right, I get the number of uh, times that's been found within the, uh, within the document. If I click on the cog, I can then upgrade that from just a find to a find and replace as well. So I can come into here and say I want to replace this with, maybe I just want to remove the word hardware. I can go ahead and hit replace all and have that uh, word removed from my spreadsheet really quickly and easily. Again, no need to have mouse and keyboard just to do this, all with just my hands. And as we move on, I'm going to show you one of the other great features that we've made now available for touch as well. And that's the new autofill feature. And so if you think about when you wanted to fill out a list of months or values sequentially, you would go and click that little icon on your, uh, on your Excel spreadsheet and drag that down something that's really hard to do with just touch. But now if I go and select my data, 
I now get a fill option that pops up, which then changes my selector. And then as I go and drag that down, you'll notice I get all of that sequential data placed in for me really quickly and easily. So again, taking those features and functions that we have for mouse and keyboard and making them available for touch. One of the other areas we've continued to make improvements in is in the charts and visualizations. And in Excel 2016, we had some great feedback on our tree map chart. And so all of those new visualizations are available in Excel mobile as well. Okay. So you can see here I have some hierarchical data and I want to go and represent that in a chart. So I can simply hit insert, go to my charts list and select the new tree map chart. And you'll notice right there I have that hierarchical data represented really quickly and easily via that, via that tree map. Or if I want, I can go and change that out and switch that out for a sunburst and you notice really quickly and easily a great smooth animations that takes that chart and updates that for Beautiful. it, making it simple for me to work with that data. We've also done quite a few updates to PowerPoint. Yeah, so let's switch over to that now and have a look. I've got this uh, great presentation here around our solar panel design process. And one of the things around PowerPoint is creating really engaging slides and things that look nice. Yep. However, with the new designer feature, it makes it even easier for me to do that. So if I go and insert a picture into my uh, title slide here, and I've got this great picture of some solar panels, you'll notice that PowerPoint actually goes through and suggests designs to me based on the template that I have. And so I can actually go through and see ways that that image can be laid out. You'll also notice it takes advantage of the template as well. So those kind of little swirls and designs I have there yeah. are overlaid on top, creating a really nice effect. The other area we've made some great improvements as well is in a new transition called Morph. And so you'll see here, if I put my uh, presentation into uh, slideshow mode, my transitions through my slides are kind of, you know, they're kind of jarring and I just tend to flick between each of the images. Right. But going back to my design mode, if I decide to apply the uh, Morph transition to each of my slides, Morph actually takes the objects that are in the slide and creates a great, really rich transition for me, really making an engaging slide for me to move with. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is come back to the slideshow and I'll show you what that morph looks like. And so as we go through our slides, you'll notice that now as I transition through my slides, I get these great animations that help fade through from one slide to the next. And in this one here where I actually have four images, Morph actually goes through and puts in those animation paths for me, making it really easy for me to move between slides and create a really engaging presentation for the people who are, who are sitting there watching that. Right, that's much better. The other area we've made uh, additional changes as well is around inking. Now, we've been able to ink in PowerPoint while we've been in presentation mode for a while now, but what I can do now is simply take my stylus and actually start inking on my slides directly while I'm in design mode. Mm -hmm. And so if I come to here and draw a circle, you'll notice that PowerPoint actually takes that, not only takes my circle and, and allows me to ink, but also then converts that into a shape. And so I can do that with any shape I want. If I decide I want to put in there a square or a circle or a triangle, I can go and do that. And they're actually objects that I can work with. So I can then take those, resize them, move them around as I need to right there within PowerPoint. So it's now not just about using a mouse and keyboard, but also about using my hand and my pen to be able to go and do really, really fine motion control on that. So since you've already got the pen out, we've also added inking to Word, right? Yeah, in fact, we've added inking to all of the core Office applications. So PowerPoint, Word, and Excel all have inking capabilities now. Great. And you'll notice here, if I've got my uh, Word document open for the uh, 2015 uh, annual report, and what I want to do is actually start to annotate and mark this up. So simply by taking my pen, you'll notice I can go and draw right across the top of my document there. I can make notes on things that need to be updated and things that also need to be taken care of as part of this as well. So, you know, if someone's missed adding a chart into my document, I want to make sure that gets included. And it's really great that I can, you know, while I'm using my pen, also use my finger to be able to do scrolling and, and nothing gets confused anymore about, you know, drawing while my finger touches. It only happens when I'm using my pen. So beyond all the work you've done for Office on Windows 10, we've also made updates to Office for iOS with the new capabilities tailored to the iPad Pro. Yeah, so the iPad Pro has a much larger screen, making things like multitasking and working with Excel much more capable now. And with the new stylus, all of those inking capabilities we saw on this Surface are also available on the iPad Pro. So you can see here, if we start with Word on my iPad, that same document I had on my Surface Pro is right here for me. And you'll notice all of that inking has followed across to my iPad as well. So it doesn't matter where I am with the power of the cloud, that document follows me wherever I go. And one of the new features with the iPad Pro is this new ability with the pencil to go ahead and ink right on screen as well. So I can go ahead and as I write on that, you'll notice that I can go and annotate directly on screen with my pencil. And that's highlighted the draw tab, giving you quite a few new options. Yeah, so because we are drawing, we have all of these options for ink and highlighting and also you know, being able to erase marks that we've made as well with the pencil we, right there on screen. Now as we continue through, one of the other things that the iPad Pro is capable of is now multitasking. So with the larger screen, it's much easier to have two applications side by side. We can see here, I, uh, I've actually been reminded I needed to add that chart into the financial report. So if I slide in from the right hand side here, you can see I'll open up a previous application that I've had loaded as well. In this case, my Excel, where that chart's loaded. Mm -hmm. So I can go ahead and select that chart in Excel, copy that, come straight over to Word, and paste that right in there 
Using the same functions and features that I have on Windows before, I can copy and paste between applications on now on the iPad Pro, making it really easy for me to work the same way I do anywhere. So if we move over to PowerPoint, those same inking capabilities follow us and are available in all of the Office applications on iPad. So Word, Excel, and PowerPoint all now have that annotation capability. Mm -hmm. Now, in this presentation here, I'm comparing some mobile and desktop visitor stats. And rather than building a chart, I'm simply going to take my pencil and draw in circles to represent each of those values. And you'll notice as I go and draw those circles, not perfect, but the ink to shape functionality takes that and turns it into a perfect circle object for me really quickly and easily. Right. Now my next slide, I actually want to go and build a quick Venn diagram as well. So what I'm going to do is the same thing, just draw out a couple of circles in varying colors, and then take that object and overlap that so I can get that Venn diagram. So now if I switch that into presentation mode, you'll notice that Morph actually takes those objects and then does that merge across for me, that really nice animation between slides, creating a really smooth transition between my different objects there really quickly and easily. So great productivity tools across every platform available to us now. Really great to see all these new capabilities. Of course, these are just highlights of some of the new Office updates for Windows 10 and iPad Pro. But Ben, how can I get started with some of these experiences? Yeah, so you can start using what we've shown today by installing the apps from the Windows Store and iOS App Store. And also keep checking back to the Office blog as well as Microsoft Mechanics on Wednesdays or as news breaks for all the latest updates. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.